living a life of great faith. Let's go to Luke chapter 7 once again. Luke 7, 1. Now, when he, Jesus, had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. When he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, He was worthy for whom he should do this, for he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Jesus went with him, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying, Lord, trouble not yourself, for I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say a word, and my servant shall be healed. I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say to one, go. And he goes to another, come. And he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. Jesus heard these things. He marveled at him and turned him about and said to the people that followed him, I say unto you, I've not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Now, <clears throat> to have and to live a life of great faith. Now, we're not talking about you being a great person. That doesn't have anything to do with this. You are a great person because you're born again. You understand? But great faith is available to every born again child of God and it's available to every person that's not born again if they just, get, just ask Jesus, come into your heart because we have his faith. It was imparted into your spirit the moment you were born again. Hallelujah. Now, the first step is to believe the love. We read that last night from 1 John chapter 4. We have known and believed the love that God has for us. And we looked at the great prayer of Jesus in the 17th chapter of John where he prayed. He said, I pray not for these, but for also for those that will believe on me through their word. So he was praying for all of us. And he said, show them that you love them as much as you do me. Glory to God. That was so startling to me the first time I read it. I, I didn't know what to do with it. But I, I was full of condemnation. I didn't know that Romans 8, 1 says, therefore there is now, 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 now. Every time you read it, it upgrades. <laughs> now, it can't be now a while ago. <laughs> but I had a time, I didn't know that scripture's in there. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God. We have to believe that love. We have to believe that he loves me. And the devil will do his best to beat you over the head with your past. And your past doesn't exist anywhere except in your head. Do you understand that? Old things passed away. And he's still hammering you with something that happened. Let me ask you something. Uh, and if you have, don't raise your hand. But how many of you have ever killed a Christian? The apostle Paul did when he was Saul of Tarsus. Consented unto their death. Held their coats while they stoned Stephen. He was all for it. Yet, the moment he saw Jesus, he said, Lord, who are you? Shortest salvation prayer on record. Lord, the Lord never, ever brought that sin up to him again. Now, he brought it up to the Lord. 
He brought it up in another vision when he saw Jesus. And Jesus didn't even acknowledge that he said it. Why? Uh, there was another man that did that. Amen. That man that did that died on the road to Damascus. Right. Mm. I, I was reading. I was just reading along in my Bible. This is back in the very, very early years, like I was saying. <clears throat> and and I, I, I'm reading along there, Second Corinthians, and I, and, and I came across, you know, chapter 7, and, and I, I'm, just, I'm just reading along. And I'm the, oh, I'm enjoying this. Any man that is in Christ Jesus, oh, glory, that's in the fifth chapter, is, is a new creature and old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah, glory to God. Yes, amen. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. And I got over here to chapter seven, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We've wronged no man. We've corrupted no... What? We've defrauded no man. It shocked me. I, I, I literally, I, I straightened up <coughs> like I threw my Bible in the floor. In fact, I remember right, I think I did. It startled me. I wronged no man. Defrauded no man. And I blurted this out before I had sense enough for, man, sometimes you can't fix stupid. <laughs> and it just blurted out of me. I said, I caught this man in a lie. Defrauded no man. Wrong no man. Man, whew, one and only time that the Lord spoke to me like this, and I say before heaven, glory to God, he'll never have to talk to me like this again. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, the word of God roared on the inside of me. I didn't hear it with these natural ears. It's bigger than that. Yes, when you hear the word of God in your spirit being, it's bigger than your ears. Yes, Those natural ears can't hear much. But I'm telling you, when the Spirit of God roars out at you inside your spirit, I mean, your hair hears it, your eyebrows hear it, your nose hears it. I mean, every cell of your being gets it. He said, you watch who you call a liar. Man, I'm sitting there trembling. He said, that man died on the road to Damascus. Oh, oh, glory to God. It struck me with such a force. I thought, hallelujah, glory to God. That old man, that old man died, hallelujah, on the second day of November, 1962 in North Little Rock, Arkansas. He died a graveyard dead. And a new man is alive. A new creature. A new being that never existed before now. This is the gospel, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Every soldier on the battlefield needs to know this. Man. Stonewall Jackson, great Southern general, Civil War. But Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee made the statement, we cannot ask any man to go into battle without giving him the opportunity to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And it was the, it was the singing in the southern camps. It was the singing of those, of those, of those southern Christian soldiers now, there were Christians on, on the northern side too, but you ever wonder how come the south became the Bible belt? That's when it happened, was during the Civil War when all, when they were, all this praising and worship was going on. There, there was absolute revival broke out in the southern army. Well, then one broke out in the northern, northern army also because <laughs> D.L. Moody was preaching on both sides. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, how, do, do you ever wonder? Probably not, but I did. 
How come they call Stonewall Jackson Stonewall? <laughs> he would sit on his horse like a stone wall and he would view the battlefield in range of rifle fire. And he'd just sit there and observe the battlefield. And they asked him, sir, there, there, was, there was one man that this, this, this young man asking him this question is a matter of record. He said, sir, general, sir, uh, <laughs> you, just, you just sit up there Aren't you afraid you'll get hit? He said, sonny boy, when you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're just as safe on the battlefield as you are home in bed. Amen. Isn't that something? That's, that's the kind of revelation that God is beginning to build again into the body of Christ. Every soldier needs to know that. And when a soldier knows that and he goes to the 91st Psalm and believes that, you can't kill him. Now, someone said, yeah, but, but General Jackson got killed. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, hold it. Let's see how he got killed. Enemy, enemy soldier didn't kill him. He frightened one night after dark, and he should have known better. He did, but he, anyway, he frightened this young sentry in the dark, walked up on his, on his post, and this young sentry just shot him, not knowing who it was. Well, he was wrong. He shouldn't have done that. And they, 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 they put the general in, in the, the hospital, <laughs> he did not die of that gunshot wound. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want you to listen to what happens to him. He got pneumonia and his wife came in praying for him while he was sick. She said, come on now, the Lord will heal you. He said, no, it's not time for me to be healed. The Lord has shown me it's time for me to come home. So he said, uh, I'm going to go on home. And, he, and he, he, he left that night. That's the way you're supposed to go. Now, think back on this because of the faith of those men and those soldiers, the North was having an extremely difficult time defeating the South. And God could not allow the South to win that war. There's no way they're going to win that war. So he had to, he had to make certain maneuvers, but, but he always honors faith. I don't care. I don't care in whom it's working. He will honor it. Are you listening to me? This is vital information. This, 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 this is what the kingdom is made out of. World War II, good friend of mine, P-47 pilot in, in, uh, Italy, when they were, they were cutting off at, in the, the center of the Italian boot there, they were cutting off uh, rail lines and so forth where the Germans were sending supplies down those railroads to the Italian troops and to other German troops. And so they, they sent these, these thunderbolts in there to shoot up those railroads and shoot up the, and just stop all of that supply. Well, uh, AC was part of that. He was, he was flying a P-47 doing it. And they were flying, I mean, it was low altitude, brother. I mean, they, the Luftwaffe was finished. They had air superiority. So, I mean, they're just, I, I've seen films of this. 
And they, I mean, they're down on the trees, brother. And they're cutting across this country and they're seeing anything. I mean, a barn, a railroad, anything. Just cut down on it and just shoot it all to pieces. And some of them flying three or four, five missions a day doing this. It's hard work, hard and flying. AC's cutting across this place. And he comes up on this little hill and, and he said, all of a sudden, he's looking at a 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. I mean, he's looking right down the barrel of this thing because he's down there on the, on the level with them. And he said, man, well, his first reaction, you know, he just hit the trigger and his guns didn't fire. Man, I mean, he's pulling that trigger and it didn't work. But the guy, the, the, the guy on the ACAC, he, he, his cannon didn't fire. He didn't shoot. And AC thought, I wonder why the guy didn't shoot. Well, the war's over for years. Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship are having a, 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 a regional meeting in Germany. And they're giving testimonies and, and so forth. And AC gave that testimony about what happened. After the meeting, this, this German came up to him and, and he said, uh, Brother, Sorel, uh, uh, Brother uh, Sorel, was that on at Hill such and such, such, such when that happened to you? He said, yeah. He said, I thought so. He said, I, I was on that 20 millimeter cannon. Here's a spirit-filled guy that was on that cannon. And AC's got people at home praying over him. This fella's got people at home praying over him, so neither one of them's guns worked. <laughs> that, <laughs> that guy said, he, he said, brother, brother, he said, I mean, you popped up over that hill, and he said, all I could see was them eight machine guns looking at me. He said, you right in my face just point blank. He said, man, I'm stomping that trigger and that thing not shooting. <laughs> he said, I thought, uh, he said, I, I, I thought, man, I'm just dead. But he said, you just went on. And he said, I kicked it again. And he said, boy, she worked fine. Well, AC said, once I got past there, he said, I, I tried it again. Everything worked fine. <laughs> See, you don't know that. You, you know, that, that's part of the unseen realm. That's part of the heavenlies in operation. Those are angels in operation. That's faith working. That's what faith does. That's the reason every soldier ought to know the laws and rules of faith. Glory to God. Every commander needs to know the laws and the rules of faith and how they work. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> another time, uh, they had a low overcast, about 400 feet overcast. And uh, under the cover of that overcast, the Germans were moving supplies in trucks because they thinking, you know, these guys are not going to be flying on a day like this. And so they came in and asked for volunteers. Anybody that, that'll go to this, they said, now, <clears throat> it's... it's uh, it's a, it's a tough mission. It's, it, 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 it couldn't be just a suicide mission because <clears throat> you're going to take them by surprise on the first pass, but the next pass, you're going to be down in the weeds, man, and you're going to be down there. You're going to have to come back down through that overcast and break out 400 feet above the ground and get on down in there low and, and shoot up that convoy. Well, AC's volunteered for. And so, and sure enough, they went down, broke out, got on the road, and they just ripped through that convoy on the first pass. But then they're back up in the clouds. They made their turn, came back around. Whoo, man, I mean, the whole bunch is ready for them now. They're waiting on them. And so AC comes down and he lines up. He pulls out, after he made the pass, he pulls out like this, and somebody shot three feet off his right wing tip. And that, as he's climbing, that airplane, and at this, at this point, he's not high enough to jump. 
And so that thing is in a turn like this. And he, and he said the, the control stick's beating him between the legs and he can't, even, he can't even hold on to the thing, can't catch it, much less fly the airplane. And he said, oh God, I gotta get, I gotta get out here enough of you to get out of this thing. He said it, it came around like that and, his, and, then, it, and then he said it, it, it leveled out and, and began to climb. So he said, uh, and, and the, the stick quit beating him between the knees. And, and he, he said, we climbed up, climbed up, climbed up. He said, as soon as I got high enough, man, he said, I started unbuckling. I'm getting out of this thing. And he started to get out and stand up here, Brian. As he started to get out, he unbuckled his, his harness and he, he, um, he's trying to get up. Two hands got him like this and shoved him back down in the seat. He said, I could feel him. Thanks, man. He, he said, I, I could feel him. They're on my shoulders. Now, if you're, if you're not a believer, you don't know any of that's even available. But every soldier needs to know that. That battlefield's full of angels and that battlefield's full of demons. Well, he... <laughs> <clears throat> he said, I, I'm flying along there. And he said, this thing is responsive. And he said, I'm flying. And he got three feet of the wing gone. Wow. <laughs> and he said, everything's working out. And he wasn't too sure. He, he wasn't really all that sure after going through all this where the, where, where the field was, where the base was. And he's praying, oh, God, help me. <laughs> he knew God was helping him already. And he said, and, and he's flying like this. And he suddenly, he said, and I saw the, the airport, I saw the field over here like this. And he said, so I just went ahead and lined it up and landed. He said, the thing just, just flew fine. <laughs> and he said later, Lord, how come you to line me up uh, 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 off like that. He said, well, AC, I had to put it off to your left. You couldn't have seen the airport at the, at, at the angle of attack you were, the big old engine on the front of there. He said, I had to line you up where you could see it outside. Can you, can you, can you, you, can you see yeah. what's happening in the unseen realm? That realm is more real than this natural physical realm is. That realm, the reason you can't see there is because it functions beyond the speed of light. Everything is moving all the time. We talked about this last night. That chair is moving. All molecular, all natural material things, the, the molecular structure in anything like that is moving all the time. You get it beyond the speed of light, it'll disappear. That's where the spirit realm is. It's more real than this natural realm because the spirit realm created the natural realm. But this is the reason why natural people have a hard time with God and so forth with things they can't see. They don't understand what they can't see. But we do. We understand there's more there than what these eyes can see and what these ears can hear. While we look not at the things that are temporary, but we look at the things which are unseen. That's right. Hallelujah. All right, now then, let's follow this a little bit further. <clears throat> we talked about that last night. I held my Bible up here like this indicating that this line here is the light line. Above this is the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. Below this is below the speed of light. Adam at one time could see both. There was no line to him. He's like God. He could see both realms. But when he fell... He couldn't see up there anymore because he slowed down to the natural speed of a fallen angel. 
So God is light. God is love. And in him is no darkness at all. We're not talking about light like, like this light or sunshine. We're talking about light energy. The most powerful thing there is. Light energy. Laser is amplified light. But now think about this. You didn't know Jesus. Your spirit man was dead. But you said, Jesus, come into my heart. The scripture says in the fifth chapter of the book of Romans, talking about the gift of righteousness. In fact, turn over there with me right quick. The book of Romans chapter five. Talking about verse 15, not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, that's talking about Adam, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Now, verse 17, if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more. Oh, glory to God. You ought to shout every time you read this. See, what God did in Jesus on the cross, far greater than what the devil did in Adam in the garden. Much more, much more. They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, talking about Jesus, the free gift or righteousness came upon all men. Look at it like an overcast. Like you're looking up at, at clouds like an overcast. Righteousness came upon all men. It's over all men right now. It's there. It's available. It's in the heavenly. But in those heavenlies, in, and I'm not talking about in heaven where God's living. I'm talking about in, in the atmosphere here, the heavenly atmosphere. There's the atmosphere, heavenlies around this earth. There's a heavenlies called space. And there's the third heaven where God lives. Now, this atmosphere is where principalities and powers. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation? Well, you can't see them. They're functioning beyond the speed of light. But they're here. This room's full of them right now. Everybody in here has got at least one. That's what Jesus said. Now, <clears throat> think about this. The scripture says, we were born of the light. We are children of the light. We put on the armor of light. God is light. We are born of the light. We put on the armor of light and we walk in the light as he is in the light. The moment you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The righteousness of God that was hanging right over you at the speed of light, the moment that light struck your spirit, glory to God, killed that old man. And all of a sudden, your spirit is at light speed. 186,000 miles a second. And the all all of God, God's faith, God's joy, God's presence, everything about him. You were made the righteousness of God in him. And he put his faith in you. Hallelujah. And that faith operates at the speed of light. It's functioning in that, in, in that light energy realm. 
That's the reason you have the power and the authority to take things out of that unseen realm and bring by faith being the substance of things hoped for. You give substance to those things and they manifest in this natural world. Amen. That's the reason you have to stay in faith. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it didn't work. It. Hallelujah. Now, the moment you did that, the heavenlies, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And the moment you exercised faith and received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the heavenlies came inside you. The kingdom of God is in here. The heavenlies are in here. You've been raised up to sit together with him in heavenly places. The word says you are a citizen of heaven. Glory to God. Fix your affection on things above. That's who you are. That's your life, man. You, you're not, you're not, you're not, only reason you're still here is because you're a soldier in the army of the Lord. You're not down here to make a living. You're no, 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 no. You're a witness to the heavenly vision. Glory to God. That ought to be the reason you get up every morning. Well, I got to go to work and get some shoes for baby. Come on. You mean to tell me all that's on the inside of you and you can't get shoes? <laughs> but you have to learn how to function in this realm. It's all on the inside of you right now. All you could ever dream more than you could ever ask is in there right now. The plan of before the foundation of the world is in you because God is in you. Don't ever walk around the house anymore and say, I can't find my keys. 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 Where are my keys? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you do know. Let me ask you, does God know where your keys are? Yes. Does your angel know where your keys are? Yes. What makes you think you don't know? That's right. That's right. Amen. That information is on the inside of you, right. mainly because wherever they are, you put them there. So <laughs> it's in you right now. Don't go around saying, I don't know, because you ain't never going to find them. <laughs> All right, take it a while. Instead of doing that, say, Father, now I know you know where those keys are and my angel knows where those keys are. Ministering spirits, now I need you to get those keys in my hand. I need them now. And so because you know and because my angels know, I know I know because you're in me and, and the information is in me now. I just need to get it up to my brain where I can find these keys. Instead of walking around saying, I can't find my key. Then start over again and say, I know where those keys are. Glory to God. I know where they are. I know where they are. And God will reveal them to me. Glory, Glory was looking for, <laughs> she's looking for her keys the other day. And I mean, we'd been all over that house looking for her car keys. And, I, and she and I prayed. And, and you know, I said, Lord, we... We need those keys. Well, she went ahead and I'm, I, she went with her sister and they went ahead and, and went in another car. Well, I'm still there at the house. I said, Lord, I, I thank you and praise you that uh, you know exactly where those keys are and, and uh, I receive that. I take that and I, I'm, I, I'm just rolling to carry that over on you. It wasn't, oh, five minutes she had been working out that morning and she, she came in out of the exercise room and she changed out of her out, out of her workout clothes and, uh, and so and I just I just walked through <laughs> I walked through her bathroom and on this ottoman that's in her bathroom her, her gym shorts were laying there on that ottoman I walked through there and I saw those gym shorts. There's the key. <laughs> you don't have to 
be looking for no week. Right. Walking around saying, I just don't know. I just don't know. You keep saying that and you could look right at those keys and not see them. That'll happen. It'll blind you to it. But you can't, the, the devil can't blind you to it when you're operating in the light as he is in the light. You're not working in darkness. You're walking by faith. Amen. The, these things work by the laws that govern faith. Amen. So let's go over there now and I'll begin closing this in the 11th chapter of the book of Mark. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This, this is the law of faith. Faith works by spiritual law. There are elements of those laws that you can't violate them and cause faith to work anyway. Faith is a spiritual force and it lives inside your born again spirit and it functions beyond the speed of light. So you can't see it and there's a lot of times you can't feel it. So don't try to, don't, don't try to judge it by what you feel or what you see because you're looking in this natural realm and you go around saying something like, I just wonder why this isn't working. It is working all the time. You just turned it off. I wonder why this isn't working. You just said it's not working. Well, I don't see why that's so important. I know it, but it's time you learned. That is important, far more important than you think it is. Now, Jesus, I want you to look at this. In the, uh, Mark 11, 11, Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. When he had looked round about upon all things, and now evening was come, so he spent it all day in that temple, he went out unto Bethany with the 12. That's the first step of faith. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. The words that I speak unto you, they are not my own. It is the father that dwells within me. He does the works. Yeah. That's the first area of faith. Keep your mouth shut until you find out from the father what to say. Are you with me now? They were acting just as ugly that day in the temple as they're going to be acting tomorrow when he gets there. But he didn't do anything and he didn't say anything. <clears throat> and if you read, you can read between the lines there. I don't think they knew he was there. If they had known he was there, they, you know, anytime they recognized that he was there, oh man, I mean, it, it disturbed everything. But <clears throat> he was undercover. <laughs> you can walk by faith and be undercover. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for another lesson. But anyway, <clears throat> now, on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not. And Jesus answered and said to it, the fig tree said something. Oh, Brother Cobra, hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. You don't realize how much you respond and talk back to things. That fig tree said, you're not getting anything to eat here today. Oh, man. Boy, that sacred iliac is talking to me today. Well, talk back. Yes. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, Jesus answered and said, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. Nine words. And his disciples heard it. So he wasn't quiet about it. And notice, he saw a fig tree afar off. Get online 
and look up fig trees, holy land, and get some pictures of those fig trees. That was a big tree, big tree. And that you'll see healthy trees and there are websites that will give you a comparison and show you a withered fig tree and show you exactly what it looked like after Jesus got through with it, after his faith got through with it. Yeah. Now, watch this now. Be, be careful to follow me. No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it and he was afar off. Now notice, he spoke to the tree and they came to Jerusalem. He didn't hang around that tree. He didn't look, see if anything was happening to it. He just spoke to it, turned around, hit the road. Now, as far as faith is concerned, that is a dead tree. That is a dead tree. No man's going to eat fruit on that thing forever. Whether the tree dies or it gets burned up, it is never, ever going to have another fig on it forever. Because faith spoke. Yeah, but that was Jesus. I know it. You've got the same faith in you. He's the author of your faith and the developer of it. Now, follow me now. He went to Jerusalem Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. Now that's the reason he didn't say or do anything the night before. He spent the night inquiring of the Lord. He saw what was going on over there. That's the first step of faith. He spent the night inquiring of the Lord before he began to shoot his mouth off with a bunch of words. He got words from the Father. And the words from the Father are the words the Father will back. Amen. Because they come out of your spirit and not out of your, your mind or your soulish part of you. Now, he began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, here's another part that has to do with faith. Most people have the idea that cleaning that temple was the mission. No, no, no. Notice this. He would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught saying unto them, is it not written? My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and Pharisees heard it and saw how they might destroy him. They feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when evening came, he preached all day. That was the mission. The sower sowed the word. The word of God is always the mission of every believer. The word, you're a witness to the word. You're a sower of the word. You're a soldier in the army of the Lord. That's what this is about. It's not about you making a living. If you will seek first the kingdom of God, all the things you ever need or want will be added to you. You need to find out what the mission is. Now, I, I, I want to ask some military personnel here. Sergeant Big, I'll just start with you. While you were in active duty, yes, sir. did you have to spend time thinking about how to make a living? No, sir. No. The scripture says a man doesn't go to war at his own expense. If that was the truth, we wouldn't have any Air Force. We wouldn't have any Navy. Everybody still be believing for a ship. Well, what were you doing? You were on assignment. You were working on assignment. And you had to know what that assignment was. And you were given an assignment and you followed that. You couldn't get up some morning and say, oh, Whew, I'm telling you, it's hot in this place. Um, I mean, 
don't, don't, we, don't, don't we have a post in, in Hawaii? <laughs> I, I think I'm, I, I I'm going to go over there. I mean, you know, I can be just as good a soldier there as I can here. I'm, and so I'm, I did, I'm just going to pack up my stuff and, and uh, I'm going to take me a couple of days en route and uh, I'm, I'm going to Schofield Barracks. I see y'all. <laughs> that dumb turkey's <laughs> headed for the stockade, I can tell you that now. Amen, I mean, they hunting him. Why? That's not his option. I tell you, it's not yours and mine. Well, some of you shaking your head at me like I just got out from under a bus. I mean, <laughs> okay, just hang in there a minute. <laughs> First Corinthians twelve eighteen. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased Him. You don't just make up your mind where you're going to go to church because it's close to where you live. Before the foundation of the world, God planned this thing. That's the reason you're having some hard times because he has already, he has already predestined paths or highways that we're supposed to be traveling on. And on that highway, that's where your grace is. Amen. But you get off that road, you're going, to get on, you're going to get on some road full of potholes. You're going to be driving through Sickville. Like Brother Hagin used to say, Grumble Alley. <laughs> you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be out there on the freeway. And you're looking out, and man, those people are just zooming down the road. You know, and I, I, it seems like I get sick every three or four days. The kids are sick all the time. Why? Your grace is in one place. And you in another, just cause that's where you decided you wanted to be. Well, after all, your mama said you could be anything you wanted to be. Cause after all, you American, right? You can be anything you want to be. Wrong. No, we can be anything God has called us to be. Cause that's, that's where your joy is. That's where the power is. You're going to get hit by the devil anywhere you are. But when you're in your place, that's where you're in your grace. And in that grace, you have the power to win. Hallelujah. Every time he attacks you. Amen. Wish I had time to spend more time on that, but I don't. Now, go back to Mark 11. I said I was closing. I am. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> when evening was come, verse 19, he went out of the city. Now he had, it had been 12 hours at this time approximately since he spoke to that fig tree. Now, now you know Peter as well as I know Peter. If there had been any sign of that fig tree drying up, he would have said something about it. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't look any different than it had before. And the clue to it is right here. See, you, you, you can't see what's happening in, in this heavenly realm. Because that, that's, that, that's working out there at light speed. And, and it's, it's powerful. Faith is working, changing material things. Faith working and working and working. It may take years depending on what kind of a product, project it is. Gloria worked on this house. She worked on that, the house we live in now. She worked and planned on that house for over 30 years. It was a dream on the inside of her and she was enjoying it. We'd come home. We, now, hey, we live good. And for 20 years, we lived in a, in a great house. But it, but it wasn't the house. You understand? And, and so she, she came in and she said, I'm telling you, Kenneth, this thing just keeps getting bigger. I can't see anywhere to cut it down. I said, Gloria, come on. It's just a dream. Let it grow. Enjoy it. She said, okay. 
we'd come home, she'd spread all that stuff out on the dining table and here we all those house pictures and she finally got her some graph paper where she could, she could draw rooms and stuff. This thing is growing on the inside of her. 30 years went by. She came into me, she said, I'm gonna have to either quit or build this thing, one of the two. And, and she said, now, I, I, let, let's, let's, let's set ourselves aside. And we did for a week. And she said, let's, let's, let's pray about this. I need to know if it's God's perfect will to build this house. Because she said, if it didn't, I heard her say this to the Lord when we got into prayer. She said, Lord, if it's not your perfect will for us to build this house, I'll never bring it up again. I'll never mention it again. And I have no regrets. Well, see, she enjoyed it all those years. But we didn't know as much back then as, as we do now. We were getting there. And <laughs> we prayed. And of course, the Lord said to me, he said, lay your hands on her, read this scripture to her, and minister this house to her because it's part of your prosperity. Well, I didn't understand really exactly what he was talking about then, but I obeyed him. I just, we were sitting on, on the couch, and I just laid hands on her and read that scripture. Immediately, tears started running down her face. And come to find out, that was the scripture over 30 years before while I was a student at Oral Roberts University. She read a little book by Oral Roberts that said, don't throw away your dreams. Write them down. I, and she wrote it down. The top of the list was the perfect house for this family and this ministry, the other women, for this ministry and this family. And it was that scripture. I didn't know it. And God told me to read that to her. It ministered to her. Can you see it? Now, he said, build it. And he told me, he said, you stay out of it. Don't even go out there unless I tell you to. I said, Lord, why? He said, anything you would come up with would just be a natural idea. It would come out of the soulish part of you. And he said, besides that, I said in the word, a wise woman builds her house. I never said nothing about a man. Now you stay out of it. And he said, he said, the dream began to take upon itself faith in the unseen realm. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith was growing all the time. She's developing this and gone God's timetable. She wasn't pushing it because, hey, we hadn't borrowed money in 48 and a half years. That wasn't any time to start. So you don't push it. You just dream on. What's happening? The heavenlies are picking up on that. And it's on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith is working. And it began to take upon itself faith. And it was about to be born. That's the reason she came in there and said, I either got to quit this or build this house. Yes. So, you know, it took about two years after we made the decision because you got to do the plans and, and, and do all that, get all that together. During that two years time, she and I have never, ever received an offering ever in this ministry for our own needs. Never. We don't write letters and, and well, hey, uh, we're, Gloria and I are building the house and would you like to be a part of it? No, 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 no. That, now, I'm, you know, I'm not criticizing somebody else, but, but what we get, we get by faith. If faith won't get it, I'm going to have it. If the word won't bring it, then it, it, I don't have, I'm going to have anything to do with it. And people would send money in there. My partners would, would send, you know, their, their regular uh, monthly uh, partnership. And they'd say, well, I'm adding an extra $100 for Gloria's house. Nobody said anything about Gloria's house. What's happening? Our angels are happening. That's what's happening. And we got partners that pray for us all the time. And they pick it up. And there, there's some of them that, that would call and say, Kenneth Glory building a house. I said, yeah. 
Well, I seem to me like I, th- I knew that. <laughs> by the time we paid, uh, by the time we poured the foundation, the money was in the bank to build the house. What happened? Faith is working at light speed in the heavenlies, which is on the inside of it. It's producing it. It's working. It's producing it. You can't stop in the middle of that and say, well, you know, I don't know why this thing. Is. No, 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 don't, don't do that. Because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't working. Hallelujah. That was the reason for this fig tree. Now you look at this. You watch what it said. In the morning they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So now how long had gone by? Somewhere between 12 and 24 hours here. Sometime in that time period, it got from the roots that you couldn't see out to the rest of that tree where you could see it because once you kill those roots, that tree's dead. And faith words, my words are spirit and they are life. And faith words went into the roots of that tree and dried it up. Of course, then the tree died. We are inside out people. The, The Gentile world, the people that don't know God, are outside in people. Well, therefore, carnal-minded Christians don't know any better. They're still outside in people. The Lord said to me years ago, become God inside-minded. Now, you have to renew your mind to that. You, have, you, you, you take time to renew your, your mind. You do things that God tells you to do. When I realized that the blessing of Abraham was the power, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And over a period of time, that's when the Lord had me write that book about the blessing of the Lord. Well, in order to renew my mind, God said, you capitalize the word bless, blessing, blessed, every word. B-L-E-S-S, B-L-E-S-S-E-D. You capitalize that every time you write it, every time you say it in a letter, every time you, every time you text it on your phone or, or something, you capitalize every word of that. What am I doing? I'm renewing my mind to the blessing of the Lord. That's something that's in you and it's on you. Whew. You remember how mad the devil got at God over Job? He said, there's a wall around him. (laughs) There's a wall around him. Does he serve you for nothing? You have blessed him. It was the blessing wall. It wasn't the devil that tore it down. Job tore it down with fear. Don't have time to get in that. That's another lesson. Now, oh, thank you, Lord. Help me. Nine words. Well, that is Jesus. If he said nine words, I'm going to probably take me 900. No, 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 no. Those would be idle words. Because you're not going to be heard for you much say it. Faith pierces the heavenlies. Speed of light, light energy. Here we are. Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you, I want you to, I want you to count this with me. Gloria did this this morning, remind me of it, and it struck me, and I'm going to do it again tonight. Whosoever shall say, that's one say, to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith, that's two, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, that's three. He only mentioned believe once. Believe what? Believe he's the son of God? No, that's not what he said. That's good, but that's not what we're talking about here. Believe what? Believe that what you say comes to pass. 
And that's in the unseen realm. Amen. Amen. They left what he said was working. Oh, until they got back. Now, follow it again. Therefore, I say, now notice, he just used that principle himself. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So you have the power to cast out what you don't want and the power of faith to receive what you do want. Amen. What you do desire. And faith is the tool that brings it from the heavenlies, the unseen realm, and manifest because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it becomes the substance of those things. And they will transfer to you some way. They will transfer from the heavenlies to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I'll do that. Yeah, I ain't got no quitting sense. I, <laughs> the Lord just told me to finish it with this, this one scripture right here. So, um, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Proverbs 13, 22. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children <clears throat> and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now, I need an amplifier. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, sir. Okay, 13, 21, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. Can you, can you see that? It, it finds its way to you. Things that are in that spirit realm. When you find something in the word that belongs to you and you lay your faith on that and you got God's word on it, you've inquired of the Lord. He gives you the words to say and you say them and shut up. Say them and stand. Say them and stand. Don't ever say anything else. Don't ever say, I wonder this or I wonder that. Just shut up. Slap yourself on the face and shut up. Amen. It'll find its way into your hands. You may just wake up some morning they're sitting out there in the front of the house. I came back from a meeting one time and there was a Mercedes convertible sitting in my driveway. I never asked the Lord for a Mercedes, anything. I was happy with my truck. <laughs> I was just doing fine. Like some fellow said, I was happy as a pig in the sunshine. I mean, I, you know, I had me a nice pickup and I was enjoying it. I come home and here's this, here's this 500 Mercedes convertible sitting in my driveway. I thought, I wonder whose car that is. And I, finally, I, I called around and, 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 uh, and they said, it's yours. I said, so-and-so brought it down here for you. Well, I didn't, I didn't know who so-and-so was. And, and I, I you know, found out later it's one of my partners. Beautiful car. <laughs> and I said, I said, Lord, what, what happened here on this? He said, don't you remember what I said in my word that if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord and walk in my commandments and, and keep my word and my concepts, he said, 
these blessings will come on you and overtake you. And he said, boy, you got overtook. <laughs> I said, come on. And he said something, it, 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 it startled me. I, 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 I wasn't spiritually grown up enough to, to, I hadn't thought of this before. He said, Kenneth, I, I appreciate what you do. He said, you, you do what I tell you to do. And he said, I appreciate it. And he said, you, you got overtook in the blessings of the Lord. I thought, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Amen. Way back, I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I, help me with my children. My children were, were young. I, I said, I, I need something to with which to fellowship with my children. Um, I, I don't want somebody else being John's best friend. I don't want somebody else being Kelly's best friend. I, I'm, I, I want to fellowship with my kids. I, help me with something here. Well, we'd been on the road for weeks and came back and I'm driving up in my driveway. And this, I mean, th this goes back to the, to the early 70s. Drove up and there was a young man that I knew He'd come, he'd gotten born again, delivered from drugs and all that kind of thing. And I hadn't, I hadn't ridden a motorcycle in years. I mean, I, that I, you know, rode them all the time the years before, but I was too busy. I hadn't thought about it all that much. And he was sitting there on my front porch with a little Honda motorcycle in the driveway and when I drove in there, he said, Brother Kenneth, he said the word, uh, he didn't say that, he said, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, you needed something to fellowship with your children about. And he said, I wanted to, I wanted to sow my motorcycle into your family. It found its way into my hand. See, it transferred from the heavenlies into my hands. Hallelujah. Oh, if you'll let those angels work, shh. You talk about a life worth living, glory to God. And when it gets good is when God speaks to you and said, I want you to go take your truck over to so-and-so because you're knowing he's not taking your truck away from you. He got something good waiting on you. <laughs> and you just brought somebody suddenly to pass. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Oh, oh, glory to God. That's the way you open your life and your church to the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Well, see, we were able to go on then. We were able, God had a plan. We were able to go on and, uh, and, and I rode with my, my children, little, little, those little small motorcycles. I got them a couple of those. And we began to go and God began to provide other things and eventually God was able to bring about a motorcycle ministry through this ministry where thousands and thousands and thousands have been, have been brought to the Lord, particularly in the outlaw motorcycle club. Hallelujah. And it all started with that one little 350 Honda. <laughs> I just wanted something to fellowship with my children. Yes, sir. And John today, he and I are best friends. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Year before last, Saturday morning, right here in this room, I preached on inquiring of the Lord about words of faith and only say what you hear the Lord say. Well, that Saturday morning service was over. I went out to get in the car and uh, uh, Mike Leeper was waiting there in the car for me. And so I walked out there and got in the car. Well, you know, I think we're headed to the airport. We're going home. He said, uh, Brother Kenneth, uh, they can't get the door open on the airplane. And he, and he said, uh, uh, they've, they've tried and tried and can't get that door open. Well, I called Dwayne Flanagan, our, uh, my chief pilot. Dwayne and I have been flying together for a long time. And uh, 
I called him. I said, Dwayne, what, what's, what's happening to that door? He said, you unlock that thing. And he said, you can't get it. It, it, it won't release enough. You, you can't even get your fingernails in there. You, it, it, it's just stuck. And he said, I called Cessna. And they said, well, you, we're going to have to go around to the side of the airplane where the emergency exit is and drill a hole through there and, and no, no. No, no, you ain't drilling a hole in the side of my airplane. That, that, no, no, that, that's not an option. I said, no, I'm on my way out there. I'm going to put my hands on that thing. He said, okay. So I just got through preaching the message. So I just leaned back. I said, Lord, I'm inquiring of you for words of faith to speak to that door. Just got quiet. Now you, you have to understand, not here, in here. This is where you're going to hear it. You need to practice this. Practice it all the time. When you get up of a morning, Lord, sh show, me, sh show me what shirt I need to wear today. And, and listen, this one, yes, sir, no, sir, and listen to me. Well, Brother Coleman, what difference does that make? Well, for one thing, you're learning. And another thing, you don't know who he's going to have you minister to today, and they may like a red shirt and don't like a blue one. <laughs> See, there's, e everything has purpose in the spirit realm, and it's the heavenly vision that he supports. Read it in the 26th chapter of the book about it. Anyway, I lean back, and right in here, I heard him say, and I never thought about this scripture that way in my life up until then. And I've used it since and had marvelous results. Oh, good stuff. He said, you remember in my word where I said, and it's, it's coming right in here, where I said all things work together for the good of those that love God called according to his purpose? I said, yes, sir. The moment he said it, it, it clicked in my, in my spirit and in my mind. I saw the inside of that door. I know what the inside of that door looks like. I'm trained on the airplane. I, I'm, I know generally what, what is in there. And I saw all those parts inside that door. They're supposed to be working together. Something in there is not working like it's supposed to. <laughs> I saw it. And I said, yes, sir. He said, say this. And I was listening and I repeated one word at a time. Door, door, you're a thing, you're a thing. All things, all things work together, work together for those who love God, for those who love God. That would be me, that would be me called according to his purpose, called according to his purpose, that also would be me. And, and I, I said that. And then he said, say this, door open now, thus saith the Lord. And, and as he said it in my spirit, I said it. Now don't go adding anything to it. It wasn't that long. Mike's phone rang again, and it was Dwayne. He said, boss, when you said that you were coming out here, he said, I, I got in the car because I was going to drive up the other side of the ramp and, and, and meet you. But he said, I got in the car, and I thought, I'm going to try that door one more time. And he said, I tried it. It just opened fine. He said, come on now. We're ready to go. <laughs> he, 
Can you see what happened? See? Things are being affected by light energy. The very energy of God. Spiritual forces are light forces. Love, joy, goodness, patience. All of the fruit of the Spirit. Those are powerful spiritual forces, but they're unseen. They're in the light realm. Hallelujah. We're supposed to be living like this all the time, but you have to practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it, study it, listen to the CDs, watch the DVDs, get online, watch it all the time, build it, build it, build it, build it, and it'll, it'll begin to rise. Faith cometh, faith cometh. Fear gets out and you get really dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> Somebody shout amen, glory, glory, glory. I said glory, 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 glory. I know I've kept you long tonight, but I, when, I, when the Lord has a mandate on me, I, 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 have, I have to do what I'm told. Amen. And he's talking to people talking to you, talking to people online, all over the world, praise God. Thank God now it's going out all over the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are online, in the name of Jesus, take these things. You, you, with your faith, you can't see Jesus, but he's right there. He said, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens the, hears my voice, see, he said any man can hear his voice. Any man that hears my voice and will open up, I'll come in. Now, right now, open your heart and he'll come in. And when the power, when the light energy force of faith hits your spirit, oh, you become a brand new human being born of God. Hallelujah. You can get, you can get your body healed right now. Right now. You can receive it. You, you, you can receive this in the name of Jesus. Ah, bone spur in the elbow. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say will come to pass because Jesus is the high priest over your words. He's backing them when you're speaking them by faith. And that, that elbow's healed right now. It's healed right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Lungs are being healed. Lungs. Emphysema is bowing its knee right now. It's bowing its knee right now. New lungs. New lungs. New heart. Someone's receiving a new heart right now. Someone in this auditorium is receiving a new heart right now. Amen. A brand new one. I'm not talking about just a healed one. I'm talking about right out of the box, brand new. Hallelujah. Go, go get somebody to check it out, and they're going to say, this please all beats all I ever saw. This is not the man I looked at before. This is not the woman I looked at before. Hallelujah. Folks, we are living in the most marvelous day. We are living at a time when these truths are flowing like, like a river and God is saying to you, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your inner man. At that, the reason he said belly is because this is, where, this is where the voice is. This is where all these things are stored. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Chronic appendicitis. Thing just flares up and hurts and bad. Not anymore. Not anymore. You're not going to have to have it operated on. Not anymore. Glory to God. It's gone. That inflammation is gone. Inflammation is under the curse. It's listed under the curse. And you've been redeemed from inflammation. You're healed and well right now by the power of the living God. Yes, amen. Eyes are being healed both in this room and around the world. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I'm preaching recovery of sight to the blind. Recovery of sight. All kinds of 
of dim, blurry eyesight. This came through this morning. First time that that's happened just like that was this morning, and it's here again. I heard the word of the Lord. It is here right now. Dim, blurry eyesight, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Throat inflammation, strep throat, different kinds of throat disease. Be thou removed and be thou cast into this sea in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. glory. Mm, mm. Bones, 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 bones in your feet, broken down arches, bones, toe bones, ankle bones, praise God, are being replaced. Sore joints, degenerative joint disease, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. New bones come. New bones come. Come now in the name of Jesus. Now, now you have some insight of what's happening. Faith is reaching into the unseen realm right on the inside of you and changing those bones. Don't get off of it. Don't, don't, don't get away from it. I don't care if you get up in the morning and have a bone in your hurt. Say, no, 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 no. You've been cast into the sea. Glory be to God. I, no, my bones are changing. The Word of God's working in me. The Word is working in me. The Word is working in me. I keep the switch of faith turned on. The Word is working in me. Lightning words, lightning power, lightning word is working on the inside of me. Bones, you are healed. Bones, you are well. You're being exchanged for new bones. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Ha. Ah. Father, we pray for every person that has a child, that has a parent, that has a loved one out there in the world somewhere that doesn't know you. And in the name of Jesus, we follow your written word where you say, first bind the strong man. You spirit operating in the life of, call that loved one's name right now. And you spirit operating in the life of, I bind you. You desist in your maneuvers to keep my baby out of the kingdom of God. You're not doing this. You're not keeping my husband out of the kingdom. You're not keeping my wife out of the kingdom of God. I break your power, devil. I bind you right now. You shut up and get out. And Lord, you said, you said, pray the Lord of the harvest, send laborers into the field. Ministering spirits, go. Father, you know the person to whom they will listen. The very person. You know who they are. Send them today. Send them to, with the message of their salvation. Send them with the message of their deliverance. The message of their healing. Glory to God. Young man and I prayed that right when I first found out about it. Over his brother. <laughs> And the next day, that brother, uh, no, the next week, that brother called him, said, what'd you do? He said, what do you mean, what'd I do? He said, you did something. Why? He said, everybody I met for days had something to tell me. He said, I picked up a guy on the road and he had a Bible that looked like a newspaper. He said, that, they just, he said, you did something that just covered me up. And he said, I just wanted you to know it worked because I got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. See, he wouldn't listen to his brother. He wouldn't listen to his brother, but Jesus knew just exactly who, who could get through to him. Did you learn anything? Glory, 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 glory. 
Anybody in here that doesn't know Jesus as your Lord, get your hands up right now. Let's all lift our hands with them. Pray this out loud, all of us. Oh God in heaven, I believe with all my heart you raised Jesus from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I receive you. Oh, I receive your life. Take mine and do something with it. I repent of sin. I renounce it. And all of that past life, I, I, I renounce that life of sin. It's gone. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I receive him now. In Jesus' name. I fully expect to receive my supernatural prayer language. Like on the day of Pentecost. And they spoke with other tongues. Supernatural prayer language. Supernatural praise language. I receive it now. Well, let's lift your voice and use it. Scopa fra me et kete, kromon baramato kukle ba be veste be veste balate, krama andalu kumbom bramiste. Now see, you're moving. You're, you're moving in the light realm. You're moving in the unseen realm. It, it, it's not. It's not judged by the way it feels. It's not judged by the way it looks. It's judged by what God said, and you said what He said in His Word, and now you believe you receive it. Glory to God. Amen. So you just lift your voice and expect God to do something with it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Somebody's infected big toe just got healed right there. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Asthma was just healed. 39 people were just healed of sinus infection. Glory to God. 40, 40 people, 45, 52 people. Glory to God. 121 people just been healed of sinus infection. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. How, what was it, Lord? What? 327 are just healed of sinus infection. Praise God. In here and out and out and around. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Asthma, bronchitis, emphysema. Gone. Take a deep breath. I called that out one time, and this woman came up front. She had her little boy with her, and he's going, oh, he was having fun. And I, I said, uh, he must have received his healing. Oh, she said, yeah, no, you don't understand. She said, he didn't have any, any nostrils. She said, all the piping was there, but there wasn't any holes in his nose. And she said, when you said, take a deep breath, he went, and, <laughs> and God created holes in his nose and he could breathe. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. 